Hello everyone, in this video we're going to talk about turning points of polynomial functions. So when we talk about turning points, what they give us is what we call a local maximum or a local minimum. So the y coordinate of a turning point is a local maximum of the function when the point is higher than all nearby points. So we see our local maximum of our example graph on the right, right there, a local maximum. And then uh, similarly, it says the y coordinate of a turning point is a local minimum of the function when the point is lower than all nearby points. So here's our local minimum. So we call it a local maximum and minimum because it's not the only maximum or minimum of the graph, um, especially because the graph, and in this case, um, our graph is extending to positive infinity and negative infinity. So what do these turning points help us do? Well, it helps to determine the intervals for which a graph is increasing or decreasing, and we're gonna do that in the examples that we look at in this video. So we see that the function is increasing in this interval right here. Once we get to our local maximum, and then we are decreasing between the local maximum and the local minimum, and then we are back to increasing after that local minimum, okay? So a couple things. It says the graph of every polynomial function of degree n has at most n minus one turning points. And also if a polynomial function of degree n has n distinct real zeros, then its graph has exactly n minus one turning points. So we can use those two pieces of information, um, as well as the information we looked at at the very top to help us with these two examples. So we're gonna be using our TI-84 plus CE graphing calculator uh, to help us graph these and identify these turning points and the x-intercepts and the minimums and the maximums. Um, so if you have yours, great. I'll um, have mine, what I'm doing on my calculator on the screen as we get to it. So for examples, it says graph each polynomial function and identify the x-intercepts and the points where the local maximum and minimum occur. Determine the interval for which each function is increasing or decreasing. So on my calculator, I'm gonna go into y equals and I'm gonna type in my first function, which would be x cubed minus two x squared plus x minus two, and I'm gonna hit graph. So when we look at our graph here, we see that we have one x-intercept, and we see that we have two turning points. We have a local maximum and a local minimum. So on the calculator, we can use uh, in the second trace, the calculate, uh, there are some features that we can use. So let's go second trace, and we wanna find the zero of the function right now, which is our x-intercept. So we're gonna hit enter. And now it asks me for left bound and right bound. That just wants me to put this cursor somewhere on the left side of my x-intercept and then somewhere on the right side. And then we hit enter to get our final result. And that tells me what our x-intercept is. So this one says that x equals two and y equals zero. So I can say that my x-intercept is x equals two. So now what we wanna do is we wanna locate, so we've done our x-intercept, we wanna locate the local minimum and the local maximum. So I'll call this L min for our local minimum and L max for our local maximum. So now we're gonna hit second trace and now we're gonna choose minimum. So now we're gonna do just like we did with our x-intercept for left bound and right bound, we're gonna put our cursor on the left side of our minimum, our local minimum and the right side. So it looks like the minimum is approximately right here. So for the left side, I'm just gonna put my cursor like kind of like right on the y axis. I'm gonna hit enter and I'm gonna put my cursor somewhere above the x axis just to be safe and we're gonna hit enter again. So now it tells me my minimum is um, x equals 0 0.9999999 and then y equals negative two. So your calculator might say 0 0.9999 or it might say x equals one. Um, and so we're gonna go ahead and say that x is equal to one. So this is one comma negative two as our local minimum, okay? Because I've done this previously and it said x equals one. So sometimes the calculator goes back and forth on that value. So now we're gonna find the local maximum. So second trace and let's go down to number four and we want maximum. So it looks like our maximum is right around here. So we're gonna go down a little bit, hit enter, and then we're gonna go to the right of that maximum and hit enter again. And so now it tells us my maximum is 0 0.33 approximately, and then negative 1.85, okay? So we got our local minimum, we got our local maximum. Now we want to figure out our interval where our function is increasing. So increasing and decreasing. All right, so if we're looking at our graph, we see that our function is increasing here on the left side of our graph. Um, and so that's going to be when our x values are less than, and that was our where our local maximum occurred. 
So our local maximum was at zero, X had an X value of 0 0.33. So we're gonna say that's when X is less than 0 0.33, is when we're increasing. And then we see that once we get to that maximum, we're gonna go down till we get to our minimum, our local minimum, and then after our local minimum, we're gonna go back up. So our local minimum had an X value of one. So then we're gonna also say when X is greater than one. Okay, so X is less than uh, 0 0.33 and when X is greater than one. Now for decreasing, <clears throat> we see that when we are decreasing is gonna be after our local maximum right here. And then once we get to our local minimum, we're going back up. So it's just that range, that interval between our local maximum and our local minimum. So we're gonna say this is between 0 0.33, so we are greater than 0 0.33, and we are less than one, right? Because once we get to one, that's when we start going back up. So that would be our information that we could put uh, for number one, for our x-intercept, our local minimum and maximum, and our increasing and decreasing intervals. So now we're gonna do number two, so we're gonna go back to y equals. We're gonna clear off that function and we're gonna type in our new polynomial. So this is x to the fourth minus five x cubed plus two x squared plus eight x minus two. And we're gonna hit graph. All right, so this one, we have a lot more points that we need to figure out. So let's go with our x-intercepts. Notice that we have one, two, three, four of them. So we're gonna go second trace and we want our zero feature. And let's just go from left to right. So we're gonna put these cursors over our x-intercepts. So for our x-intercept, we're gonna say x is approximately one point, negative 1.11. So that'll be our first one. Second trace, zero again. Now let's go for the second one, which looks close to being on the origin. And we're gonna say x is approximately 0 0.24, okay? Second trace again, zero one more time. Now we'll find the third one. Uh, 1.82 approximately. And finally our fourth one. And we get 4.05 approximately, okay? So four zeros there, four x-intercepts. So now let's look at our local minimum and our local maximum. So local minimum, and if we notice for local minimum, we have two, right? We see that we have one at the bottom down here, lower, a little bit lower, and then one um, closer to the x-axis. So let's do minimum, so second trace, minimum. And let's just start from the left and go to the right. So for our first one here, we're gonna put our cursor about here. And the next time, we're gonna put it about right there to get our left bound and our right bound. And so this tells me that my local minimum is approximately negative 0 0.57 comma negative 4.88. Okay, and we're gonna do another one because we have a second local minimum. So we're gonna go over here to the second one and we're gonna put our cursor there and then go on the other side of that minimum and we have our other one. So this one is 3.25, I'm approximating to the nearest hundredth here, and negative 14.95. So there's our local minimum, uh, our two local minimums. And now we just have one local maximum right here at the top, so second trace maximum. And let's go back over here, put our cursor to the left of the maximum, cursor to the right, and hit enter. And so this is gonna give us 1.07 comma 4.04. All right, so we have our two local minimums graphed or identified, and we have our local maximum. And so now let's talk about when we are increasing and when we are decreasing. All right, so for, uh, let's start with decreasing because our graph starts off decreasing um, at the beginning on the left here. So we know that our graph is decreasing when X is less than, and what is our first local minimum that we wrote? That was negative 0.57 was our X value. So when X is less than negative 0.57, that's when our um, graph is going to be uh, decreasing, okay? So we're decreasing, decreasing till we get to that local minimum, then we're increasing, and now we're decreasing between the maximum, the local maximum and the second local minimum. So that's gonna be more of like a compound inequality. So what was the X value of our local maximum? It was 
so 1.07. And then we want the X value of our local, our second local minimum, which was 3.25. So between 1.07 and 3.25, that would be another example of where our function is decreasing. Now let's talk about increasing. So for increasing, we know that we had this, this section right here um, after our first local minimum. So that's gonna be our, our first local minimum was negative 0.57. So between that one and the x value of our local maximum, which was 1.07, okay? So we're increasing there, then we're decreasing, and now after we get past our um, second local minimum, we are increasing the rest of the way. And so our second local minimum was 3.25, and so we can say also when x is greater than 3.25. So between negative 0 0.57 and 1.07, we are increasing and then once we are greater than 3.25. So that's how you can use information about the turning points of polynomial functions to find the x-intercepts, the local minimum and maximum, and also when the graph or over which intervals the graph is increasing and decreasing. Mm -hmm.